Hey you guys, Erin here at Eat Move Rest and welcome back or if it's your first time to our channel then welcome. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button up in the corner if you have not already. We would love for you to join the Eat Move Rest fam. It helps us out more than you would know. Make sure you click that bell to turn on notifications. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy today's topic. And as we dive into it, be sure to leave some comments below sharing anything that resonates with you, what your cravings are, how you have maybe struggled and overcome so that we can create connection and community and grow and help each each other as we navigate. If you're here listening to this video, chances are you've struggled with cravings, you've failed and failed and failed, and you've probably done plenty of Google searching. So rather than sharing something prescriptive with you guys, I'm going to share my personal experience because I consider myself a success story now that I have been whole food plant-based for over a decade and even a couple years prior to that, I was on my health and healing journey and finding a lot of momentum and traction. So I'm gonna share what helped me to cope because honestly, cravings are a lot like anxiety, which I also struggle with. Anxiety isn't something that you can really find a cure for or completely escape from for the rest of your life. In a similar way, I still get cravings. So it's not something that I've overcome or conquered. I've just found healthier ways to cope and strategize. So since going plant-based, I have essentially become a new human being. Studies actually show that it takes seven years for our cells to completely regenerate to a point where we are a completely different person. So in college, I was the person who stayed out late at night, liked to drink, like to sleep in till all hours of the day with the blinds closed. I quit exercising. I was living on fast food, cafeteria food, processed packaged junk food. I didn't even know how to boil a pot of water, let alone cook a gourmet meal. So it was beef jerky, ramen noodles, maybe a carton of milk in my dorm room mini fridge. So what has helped me the most, especially having a biological mind, I went to college and got my degree in biological sciences. It helped for me to visualize things on a cellular level. When you consume food, you are feeding a gut microbiome. So there are living critters and creatures floating around in your gut. There is actually more gut bacteria in your gut microbiome than there are cells in your entire body. Body. And there have been countless studies laying out how strong the gut brain connection is. So when you're consuming processed, packaged, fast foods, junk foods, you are literally feeding the bad guys and they begin to proliferate and expand and grow and send more craving signals to your brain. So if you're eating a juicy burger once a month, that craving might be weak and you might say everything in moderation, but moderation becomes a slippery slope and before you know it, that burger is once a week and then maybe it's once a day. If you skip a day, then your cravings become intensified and tell your brain, hey, we're hungry down here, feed us. And it becomes really, really difficult to overcome that craving. So I always think about literally starving out the bad guys and feeding the good guys because the same holds true. And this is where self-empowerment comes in. And this is where willpower comes in. And willpower is not sexy at all. But if you want to overcome cravings, you have to have willpower. And honestly, I have an extremely strong, robust willpower. And if you don't, it's a lot like strength training. So I've got these long, lanky arms and I do do strength training and I am seeing strength gains. But it's really difficult when you're at a standstill. Like a train that's sitting on the tracks, it takes a lot of force for it to gain traction and momentum. But before you know it, it's rolling and rolling and rolling and it's almost unstoppable, which is the point where I feel like I'm at with cravings and how to navigate. So with strength training, I told Dusty, I was like, I can't even do a pull up or a push up. How am I supposed to learn how to do one, let alone 10? That's where training wheels come in. With pull ups, for example, I have a resistance band loop that I can pop one of my feet into and pull myself up with a little bit of assistance. And then with push ups, you start out on your knees until you can go to your toes. And maybe on your toes, you can only do one and then you can do five. Training wheels are essential. When it comes to curbing cravings, what helped me tremendously was having a support system. Thankfully, Dusty, my husband, if you don't know, 
He and I decided to embark on this whole food plant-based journey together. So we were each other's support system because our families were resistant. Friends were kind of off put by it. And of course, a lot of people just thought it was a fad or a trend or a phase. Well, here we are 10 years later and we've found so much success. We actually had to turn to an online community. So we found so many people we were inspired by and educated by. We began attending conferences and knowledge is power and it only further fueled our motivation and grew and strengthened our willpower. So that's why we decided to create our own channel and now our own membership community because I know so many of you guys are doing this alone. When I make a smoothie recipe, it's always serves too. And a lot of you are like, well, it's just me. My husband's not on board. My kids aren't on board. My boyfriend, my friend, whoever it is are not on board. I want this for myself. So the Eat Move Rest Club is purely for that accountability, access to us, as well as hundreds of other individuals who are like-minded on a similar trajectory. We meet weekly for Zoom calls. We do monthly challenges. We have our meal planner and recipe app and our eBooks. These are powerful tools to keep you on track. You can find everything for that linked below. It's 75% off for life recurring annually as long as you stay enrolled and committed. So be sure to check that link below if you want to join us. There are tons and tons of amazing recipes that could be considered healthy ways to satisfy your cravings. For me, rather than fighting cravings, it has always been more successful to satisfy them in healthy ways. So if you've done your Google searching on cravings, you'll find that it could be emotional. It could be that you're too stressed or anxious. You might also find that it could be sleep deprivation because when you're in a sleep deprived state, I can vouch for this, your hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin, will skyrocket and tell, your, and tell you that you are still hungry, that you're not satisfied, and it causes you to cave to cravings more. It weakens your willpower. Google will also tell you that maybe you're not getting enough of a certain nutrient, so maybe you're depleted or deficient, and it could be that you're craving chocolate because your body needs magnesium. It could be that you're craving sugar because you need more protein. It could be you're craving fat because your hormones are out of whack and you truly need some more, but you need the right kind of healthy fats. And it could be that you're craving carbs because you are overworking and under fueling yourself. So there's lots and lots of things like that that you can find anywhere, like I said, in this information age. So how do you do it in a good way? When I first started getting healthy, I would constantly over exercise and under eat or under fuel or under nourish. And that is the worst place to be when it comes to cravings because you can only sustain that willpower under fueled for so long. It caused a lot of highs and a lot of lows. It was a roller coaster every week where I would deprive, 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 and then binge, binge, binge on those two weekend days and spend the rest of the week trying to climb back out of that hole and deprive again. And this becomes a very disordered eating for a lot of people. So instead, when we went plant-based, I began hyper nourishing. I always went back to that visualization of my gut and my cells in my body. How can I nourish myself at a cellular and a microbial level? Before every bite that you take, simply ask yourself, is this helping me or is this hindering me? That is the most minute baby step decision that you have the opportunity to make multiple times a day every time that you eat to grow and gain strength in your willpower. The beauty of a whole food plant-based diet is that it's very, very high in volume, so your stomach, which is a muscle, wants to feel full. If you're eating something greasy and oily, the caloric density is much greater, so you're gonna have that teeny, teeny amount of high-calorie food sitting in the bottom of your stomach, leaving the rest of it still feeling empty. It's probably also not as nutrient-dense, so instead, if you're focusing on plant foods, they're high in volume, you feel physically full. They're also high in nutrient density, so your cells feel full. And your probiotic gut flora, the good guys are proliferating instead of the bad guys, which also tells your brain, I'm full, I'm satisfied, I'm satiated. High volume, high nutrient density, low in calories. So there's three major perks there. So running through some common cravings really quick and healthy ways to satisfy them rather than depriving yourself so you can be more nourished and more stable and be happier ultimately without having to just get through that craving. How can you satisfy it healthfully? So first and foremost, I know a lot of people, most people are coffee or caffeine consumers. I personally have never been a coffee drinker, 
but I do go through my romances on and off with caffeine. Personally, I highly recommend green tea or matcha because they have numerous benefits. And to me, the benefits that I've experienced have outweighed any of the drawbacks. Number one, matcha is a bit of an appetite suppressant because of that caffeine component. So rather than starting my morning on E with no fuel and going straight for caffeine, Instead, I recommend hypernourishing with a robust, healthy smoothie or plant-powered breakfast of your choice. And then later on, after that's digested, you can move into having your green tea. I drink Peaks Sun Goddess Matcha every single day while I'm at my computer. It gives me that calm, focused, sustained energy. It also keeps me from feeling like I constantly have to hop up and grab something out of the fridge. And another nice thing about matcha or green tea is it also boosts your metabolism, it boosts your mood, and it also does wonders for your skin. It contains catechins and chlorophyll, and they're really phenomenal for evening your skin tone and just giving you that overall nice glow. Like I said, I drink it every day. It's become part of my Zen ritual after I do my breakfast and morning workout and sit down to work at the computer. I love Peak because it is triple third party tested, triple toxin screened. It's an organic ceremonial grade matcha and it just tastes wonderful. Sometimes I'll brew a hot cup or if I'm out in the sun at the beach, I'll bring an iced matcha with me and I just love it so much. I actually have an exclusive peak discount for you guys linked below in the description if you're interested. They also have an amazing coffee replacement. It's called Nandaka, it's their newest product. It can be the perfect satisfier for coffee cravings and chocolate cravings because it contains cacao as well as a functional mushroom blend. It tastes amazing. You can make a delicious hot cocoa. I like to blend it with a couple of pitted medjool dates in water and enjoy it warmed. It's so incredible and it gives you again a nice energy boost because it contains black tea and a fermented green tea. So be sure to check out that product as well for those coffee or chocolate cravings. So chocolate was another thing for me that was kind of a struggle because a lot of us try to avoid it completely, but there are healthy ways to consume and enjoy chocolate and it's another thing that actually has benefits. So I upgraded from a Reese's peanut butter cup to a piece of dark chocolate. I really love Hue. They are organic. It's sweetened with coconut sugar and the Hue dark chocolate chips actually are sweetened with dates. So there's no granular sugar whatsoever and they're so amazing. I'll bake them into my favorite superfood brownies recipe that's actually in the meal planner. It's phenomenal for lactation, but also great for the whole family. And then we also keep cacao nibs and cacao powder on hand, again, for baked goods. The nibs are great for sprinkling on top of smoothie bowls, and it's a guilt-free way of enjoying chocolate, which like I said, has benefits. If you're not familiar, cacao is different from cocoa in that it is not processed using heat, so it maintains and retains all of its antioxidants. It is one of the most antioxidant-rich superfoods on the planet. Cacao is also very high in magnesium. It's high in iron, so if you're a female during her time of the month having your cycle, you may find that you're craving cacao or cocoa or chocolate, it's because your body might be becoming depleted in iron during your time of the month. Consuming cacao can be the most beneficial way to satisfy your cravings because you'll have that iron benefit and that magnesium, which also can relax muscles and cramps. Alcohol is another tricky one. I used to be on that same roller coaster with the deprivation and the binging. I would live for the weekends and drinking and eating junk food and just kind of like having my cheat day so to speak. I've been completely alcohol free 100% since before Max was born. So it's easy to be sober when you're pregnant, right? But then afterwards, you'll have friends again trying to push a drink in front of you or offering to buy you a drink when you go out. And I honestly have just always armed myself with a club soda and lime or a lemon and it really does the trick. There are also so many people waking up to the fact that more and more people don't want to drink alcohol, so lots of bars and restaurants now offer really fun and kind of healthy mocktails. For sweet cravings, I went from hiding candy and sugar all over. I had Starbursts in my glove compartment, Sour Patch Kids in the silverware drawer, and Skittles hiding in the nightstand. Like, no joke, I snacked on candy incessantly. So when I went whole food plant-based and high raw, I began to realize that fruit is not 
the enemy and fruit sugar is far different from candy. So I began to hyper nourish with lots and lots of fruit smoothies and fresh ripe seasonal fruit. If something's in season, it's definitely going to taste better and it's going to satisfy more. So if you're feeling like you're craving sweets, it's probably because you're under carb. So try to opt for healthy fruits. I eat a bowl of berries almost every single day for that reason. I also keep a lot of healthy dried fruit options on hand for me and the kids. Dried mango is great. Pitted medjool dates, I'll simply pit them and pop them in the freezer and it gives them a nice chewy gooey consistency. Two other really powerful superfood dried fruits, Dried black mulberries are extremely high in iron and vitamin C, and dried goji berries are extremely high in vitamin A and iron as well. So great places to get nutrition while you're satisfying your sweet tooth. I also make sure to always have baked goods on hand. I already mentioned our superfood brownies. I'll also make vanilla bean muffins. We make a lot of banana, chia, flax, oat, pancakes, and waffles. We'll throw in a scoop of vanilla protein. It got it just adds that extra oomph of nutrition and flavor. So we always have one of those, if not multiple, baked goods and muffins and waffles in the fridge. They're easy to grab and go. They're an easy option that leaves you feeling guilt-free while you're snacking and satisfying that craving in a healthy way. There's days where I'll have like four lactation brownies and be totally fine with it because they're so loaded with only healthy whole foods. They're sweetened with dates and they taste incredible. Another game changer for me was the banana nice cream. So ripening your bananas till they're speckled, peeling them, breaking them into three pieces or so, popping them in the freezer, and then you have them there to make smoothies and nice creams and smoothie bowls whenever your heart desires. So we eat a massive smoothie bowl every day for breakfast. Some days we'll have a second one sometime in the afternoon, or we'll even have it for a delicious dessert treat. If you wanna do plain banana with vanilla protein, it's literally like vanilla ice cream. You can add even a little bit more oomph by adding in some pitted medjool dates for a little bit of a chewy, gooey caramel consistency. Add chocolate for like a Snickers bowl type of flavor. I'll do a berry blend and some acai in there for an antioxidant rich one. And we'll do pitaya and jackfruit and a bunch of other fruit for a bubblegum pink bowl. That's one of our all time most popular in our meal planner. I could go on and on. Nice cream has been a hands down lifesaver, game changer, guilt free, so good. If you're more of a person that gets salty, savory, crunchy cravings, then I went from eating chips and salsa, chips and guac to carrots and celery and any other crunchy veggies, bell pepper dunked in guac or dunked in hummus. It's so much healthier for you. Guacamole is gonna give you those healthy fats plus fiber. The hummus has so much protein and iron. It's essentially chickpeas and tahini. You're also getting healthy fats that way. Another one that we love that we don't make often enough around here is kale chips. And I have a really good like Dorito cheese made from cashews and it is such a good treat. Another thing that helped me out so much was getting an air popper on Amazon to make air popped popcorn. So that became the new thing that we would sneak into the movies or we enjoy with the kids at nighttime. And it's so much better for you than what you get at the theaters or in the bags that are lined with chemicals that aren't great for you that you have to put in the microwave. Like when you go to the movie theaters, you're getting likely genetically modified corn covered in genetically modified soybean oil. So it's not even real butter, it is definitely fake colored dyed butter. If you also wanna be next level healthy, you can also make your own tortilla chips at home by finding your favorite tortillas or making them yourself cutting them into triangles and popping them in the oven to bake them, oil-free or at least lower in oil and other additives that you don't want. If you're trying to go fully plant-based and you're struggling with cravings for meat, dairy, or eggs, I'll buzz through these really quick too. So for meat, I don't have meat cravings anymore, but I do crave our lentil lasagna. It is so good. So lentils are key for that meaty texture. And we'll also add in like a crumbly tofu for that meatiness and protein and iron. And adding in mushrooms can also give it that meatiness. We recently made a protein packed taco meat 
and it has all of the above. It's got quinoa, green lentils, crumbled tofu, mushrooms. It is one of our favorites to add and season however you like. You can make a spaghetti bolognese with it or taco chipotle bowls with it. And don't be afraid of soy. If you're buying organic, you don't need to fear soy. So organic is automatically going to be non-GMO. So tofu and tempeh are super healthy and good for you. So that leads me to the next craving, eggs. This was definitely the last to go for me. Now being plant-based, the perfect easy alternative is scrambled tofu. We also have a scrambled chickpea recipe in our app and it's so simple with a few spices to achieve that same texture and taste profile. There's even a black salt you can buy. It gives it like a sulfury taste. I'm not a huge fan of needing that, but if you are, you can find that on Amazon. And last but not least, dairy. It's usually the biggest kicker for the most people and it's usually because of cheese. So there have been numerous studies showing how addictive cheese actually is. It controls people's lives, I'm not kidding. There are lots of healthy plant-based upgrades that are a step in the right direction. I wouldn't necessarily make the shredded store-bought plant-based cheeses an end-all be-all, but they're definitely a stepping stone to get you past your cheese cheese cravings. So if you need them temporarily, great, go for it. We actually make pizza without cheese and just a bunch of tomato sauce and our favorite veggies on top and we don't even love the cheese anymore. When it comes to pasta, what I do love though is our cashew parmesan which is also in our app. So you basically pulse cashews with salt and pepper and nutritional yeast and it's so good. Same texture, amazing taste, healthy fats and protein in there. And then for ice cream, Going back to the nice cream, it's literally a lifesaver. It's my favorite thing to eat whenever I'm having cravings. And for plant milks, if you're going to spend money on a carton of plant milk, go with the soy milk because it's gonna have the best nutrient profile with a little bit of healthy fat, plenty of protein and iron. When people say like, well, if you cut out milk, where are you getting your calcium? There are so many plant foods that you can get calcium from and you get vitamin D from the sun. And most dairy milks are fortified with vitamin D and B12 and other things anyway. So it's kind of a moot or moo point. <laughs> Hopefully this was helpful to you. My number one tip is to lean on others for accountability. If you don't have someone right next to you on your team, then nudge, nudge, join our membership below. And like I said, focus less on depriving yourself to curb cravings and focus more on satisfying them healthfully. If you're interested in peak tea, grab that sun goddess matcha and that nandaka coffee alternative linked below in the description as well as a nice little deal specifically for our Eat Move Rest fam. If you guys like this video, give it that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and join us over on Instagram. Dusty and I answer all of our DMs, so be sure to connect with us over there at Erin Stanzik and at DB Stanzik. And until next time, eat, move, rest, and snack your best. Bye, guys.